Hello students, in this video we'll prove the Poincaré theorem. So the Poincaré theorem states that the L2 norm of a function squared is the same as the L2 norm of its Fourier transform squared. Okay? In other words, in shorthand, I can write this as F in L2 is equal to f hat in L2. So the Fourier transform is an L2 isometry. Great. How do we prove that? Let's do some preliminary ideas. And so recall, of course, that if I have two functions, f, and I convolve them, f convolution g of x is the integral over r of f of y, and then g of x minus y, and this is valid if f, and y, if f and g are in the Schwartz class, or they are sufficiently decaying at infinity, for example, right? And so the fundamental result of this convolution is that this is how the Fourier transform operates with respect to multiplication. What do I mean by that? I mean that then, if this is the convolution, then f convolution g hat of xc is just the product of the Fourier transforms of f and g. And likewise, if you want to do the inverse Fourier transform, you have to do the convolution, right? So in other words, if I have two functions over here, f capital of xc times g capital of xc, then the inverse Fourier transform of this is going to be the inverse Fourier transform of f convolution, the inverse Fourier transform of g. Okay, so in other words, that's how convolution works with multiplication in the Fourier transform. Okay, excellent. So of course, how do you prove something like this? The proof of this is actually relatively straightforward, so proof is simple, right? It's just if I do the Fourier transform of f convolution g hat of xc, what is this? It's the integral over r of f convolution g of x e to the minus 2 pi i x xc, like so. And you feed in the definition of what this convolution is, right? So this is going to be the integral over r. And then the integral over r of f of y g of x minus y dy. And then over here, what I'm going to do is, and of course these are dx integrals, like so. And so now, I'm going to write this in a suggestive fashion. I'm going to write e to the minus 2 pi i, and then I'm going to write x minus y plus y. That doesn't change anything over here, dx. And now, if f and g are sufficiently decaying at infinity, for example, a Schwartz class, I can change the limits of integration, right? So I'm going to use Fubini's theorem. So by Fubini's theorem now, this is going to be the integral over r, the integral over r, okay? And I'm going to do a dx first, right? So I'm going to have an f of y. I'm going to put everything inside the integrand over here, f of y, g of x minus y. And then a what? Then an e to the negative 2 pi i x minus y, e to the minus 2 pi i y, and these are all times xc's, right? So there's an xc here, an xc here, right? And then we're going to have a dx, then a dy, right? Okay, so for this x integral over here, what I'm going to do is if I shift the variables, I will get basically just a copy of the Fourier transform of g. So this is going to be the integral by translation over r of just f of y e to the minus 2 pi i y dot xc. And then, like I said, by shifting here, this term over here and this term over here integrated over dx over all of r gives me g hat of xc, then a dy. And so this is just f hat of xc, g hat of xc. Beautiful, okay? Now, this will help us prove the Poincaré theorem. And how am I going to do that now? So now here's the observation for Poincaré, so proof of Poincaré. What we're going to do is we're going to consider function g of x, which is going to be what? g of x, which is going to be f of negative x complex conjugate, okay? And so how, what's the Fourier transform of g? The Fourier transform of g is the following. So g hat of xc is just the integral over r of f of negative x complex conjugate e to the minus 2 pi i x xc, right? dx. Okay. I can pull the conjugate out of everything and change the variables, and if I do that, pull the conjugate out of everything, change the variables, I see this is f hat of xc complex conjugate. So that's the rule. That's how this g of x, um, the Fourier transform of this works. Okay, and so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to consider a new function h, which is f convolution with g, right? So h of x, we're going to let this be f convolution g of x, okay? 
And so what's the first thing to observe? The first thing to observe that if I look at this, this is going to be what? This implies that h of 0, for example, h of 0 is just going to be the integral over r of f of x with what? With this complex conjugate over here. So this is going to be just f of x squared dx. Okay, That's what h of 0 is. If we look at the formula over here, if we were to plug in, this would be what? If we looked at our formula for h of, so h of, h would be what? This, this is basically what our h is going to look like. And so if we were to, um, if, since g is negative f of x with a complex conjugate, we have an f, really have an f over here with a what? Let's write out carefully. This would be a what for, in our case. This would be an f of what? Of y minus x complex conjugate. So when we plug in x equals 0, I have f of y, f of y complex conjugate. That gives me modulus of f quantity squared, right? So that's exactly what we get, h of 0. OK, good. Now, what's h? Um, what's the Fourier transform of this function? h, so h hat of xc, h hat xc is f hat xc times g hat of xc, which is f hat of xc complex conjugate. So this is modulus of f hat of xc squared. OK, great. And now by Fourier inversion, what do I know? By Fourier inversion, I know that h of 0 is the integral over r of h hat of xc, dxc, which, of course, is the integral over r of f hat of xc quantity squared, modulus squared, dxc. So on one hand, h of 0 is the integral or the L2 norm of the Fourier transform squared. And on the other hand, h of 0, by this definition, is the L2 norm of the function squared. So that says that the L2 norm of the function squared is the L2 norm of the Fourier transform squared. Thank you very much.